Mad Hurand Hakan, after sitting in a daze for some time, suddenly stood up and looked at Anuradha and said, Prime Minister. This is all your trick. I knew it then. You love the people of Sundara Chola, especially Aromas Hivarman. It is your wish to grant him the title. For that, all this lies to my mother. You have corrupted his good heart by telling falsehoods. O oh, Brahmaraya in love! What harm have I done to you? Why do you seek to betray me? For your sake should I leave my mother childless? Such a terrible adverse plot has never been done by anyone in this world? Coming from a clan of devotees of Vishnu. Shall thou, O oh creature, do such a thing? No, no. There is nothing wrong with thee. Young Pratikunthi and Aromas Hivarman have done some trick to harm you like this, he shouted. Anuradha said in a calm voice, Prince. If I had so much hatred towards them, I would not have brought them who were lying under a tree in the pouring rain. Do not complain about Aromas Hivarma either. Do you know what that brave warrior is doing at this moment? Go and say good words to the soldiers and people surrounding the Tanjore fort. He is pacifying them. He is trying to change their minds by telling them that it is not dharma for him to mount a lion while his stepfather is alive, and that such soldiers and people should not demand it. So, then, doesn't Aromas I know the message you just told me? Grace doesn't know, nobody else does. Why do you want to make it known now? Anurita. Only you will admit that you are keeping your mouth shut. The emperor gave them a grant charter by riding ten fences in a village? I will give you the Pandya country as a gift. Sir. You don't have to give the Pandya country to shut me up, just tell him your mother's command. Madhurand Hagen looked pitifully at the mother who raised him. Child. Madhurand Theka. Anuradha was right. He knew my secret from twenty years ago. That day he said, Empress. This is your secret. No one else can know unless you tell someone. This is the truth that will never come out through my mouth for a day. He said. He has been fulfilling it till today. He was the one who swore that he would be true to the Chola clan. However, he never even told Sundara Chola Emperor. If I had agreed to ascend the Chola throne, he would not have spoken. Yes, mother. I would not have spoken. But I would not have taken the office of Prime Minister with a lie in my heart. I would have gone to serve Sriranganathar," said Anuradha. But it will not necessarily take time. Madhurandha will not mount the lion. He will fulfill my wish. He himself will say no to the kingdom. My son. Say yes. Said Parayay Brati champion Mathavi. Mother. So are you the only ones who prevent me from climbing the lioness? I maintain that I am not a son born in your womb. For more than twenty years you have raised more than a son born in your womb. Why are you betraying me now? What harm have I done to you? Child. You have done me no harm. I have done you great harm. All these days I raised you like a son born in my womb and now you are not my son. I say. Don't I know how much your heart will be hurt by this? As long as I live. I would not have said this publicly. But I must fulfill my promise to my husband. I must not betray the Chola clan into which I entered. I must not put someone who was not born into the Chola clan into the Chola clan Singadahana. I must not be complicit in loading. Do you think my mind is not tormented by this? My heart was broken when I said a moment ago, you are not my son. I went to Nambi and Nambai to know what Dharma is. The sage explained the subtlety of Dharma. All the Mandars in the world are the sons of Mahadev. As a devotee of Shiva, you are not a own child and a raised child. You will give all your own property to your adopted son. But the ethos of the kingdom is different. It is a sin to deny the right of another by our lie. It is treason to identify someone who was not born in the Chola clan and put him in the Chola lion. He preached that telling the truth to one's son and the emperor is dharma. I came back listening. Kumara. Can I be happy to say that you are not my own son? 
Can I proudly say this to the Emperor? At that moment, Madhurandhagan suddenly got up and fell at the feet of Sembian Mathavi and said, Mother! I don't want a kingdom, I don't want a throne. If you ask me to stay here, I will. If Deshantra asks me to go, I will leave. But don't just say that I am not their son, I am not born in their womb. Don't tell anyone. I will die of shame. He shouted. Sembian Mathavi took Madhurandhagan and sat beside him with tears in his eyes. Kumara! I have been trying to raise you to be uninterested in the kingdom of this world and attached to the kingdom of Shiva. I have failed. Some sinners have corrupted your mind. Even now the evil has not gone away. You say in your heart, I do not want this kingdom. Let Aromazai, the son of Sundara Chola, be the king. If the country tells him to move, you are not my son. There is no need to say that publicly. It pains me immeasurably to have hurt your heart now. Confess today in the presence of Prime Minister Anuradhar. The Mahasava of small kings will meet for three days. Confess in the presence of the congregation too. I do not want to rule the kingdom. I want to engage in the handiwork of Lord Shiva and the work of the temple. That is the order of my father and mother. Build a title for Aromas Hivarman. Say that. They do nothing against the Chola kingdom. Swear that the princes will not listen to anyone's persuasion. If you do that, there is no need for me or the Prime Minister to reveal the secret of your birth. You will always be the apple of my eye, my beautiful son. Together we will go on pilgrimage across this vast land of India. We will do temple repairs here and there. Aromas Hivarman has unlimited devotion to me. Like you, I raised him mostly. He will never say no to my speech. Said Sempian Mathavi, daughter of Malavarayar. They do nothing against the Chola kingdom. Swear that the princes will not listen to anyone's persuasion. If you do that, there is no need for me or the Prime Minister to reveal the secret of your birth. You will always be the apple of my eye, my beautiful son. Together we will go on pilgrimage across this vast land of India. We will do temple repairs here and there. Aromas Hivarman has unlimited devotion to me. Like you, I raised him mostly. He will never say no to my speech. Said Sempian Mathavi, daughter of Malavarayar. They do nothing against the Chola kingdom. Swear that the princes will not listen to anyone's persuasion. If you do that, there is no need for me or the Prime Minister to reveal the secret of your birth. You will always be the apple of my eye, my beautiful son. Together we will go on pilgrimage across this vast land of India. We will do temple repairs here and there. Aromas Hivarman has unlimited devotion to me. Like you, I raised him mostly. He will never say no to my speech. Said Sempian Mathavi, daughter of Malavarayar. There is no need for the Prime Minister to reveal the secret of your birth. You will always be the apple of my eye, my beautiful son. Together we will go on pilgrimage across this vast land of India. We will do temple repairs here and there. Aromas Hivarman has unlimited devotion to me. Like you, I raised him mostly. He will never say no to my speech. Said Sempian Mathavi, daughter of Malavarayar. There is no need for the Prime Minister to reveal the secret of your birth. You will always be the apple of my eye, my beautiful son. Together we will go on pilgrimage across this vast land of India. We will do temple repairs here and there. Aromas Hivarman has unlimited devotion to me. Like you, I raised him mostly. He will never say no to my speech. Said Sempian Mathavi, daughter of Malavarayar. Madhurandhagan heard this and held his forehead with both hands and was deep in thought for some time. Aha! Uh -huh. From the time I knew Prayam, memories like some shapeless shadow often appeared and tormented me. The reason for all of them is now clear. Who in this world is as unfortunate as me? I don't know what time, in what horoscope I was born. I lost my parents in one day, in a moment. I lost my tribe. I lost a great great kingdom. I lost the Singh Adana of a thousand years of heroic lineage. 
I lost all my friends. Yes, if this truth is known, then who will be my friend? All the petty kings who swore to give their lives for my title will abandon me in an instant. Dot yes, no one has ever been so wicked as me since the beginning of the world. Mom. My understanding is confused, couldn't think clearly. Give me two days and I will tell you my decision, he said. Child. What is there for you to think about? I tell you this with my heart set on stone. Either you must agree to give up the kingdom, or I must agree that all the land and city will know that you are not the son of my womb. Either way you can't mount the lion. What can you think and say? Is there? Said Uttamai, whom the whole world praised and worshipped as a great brat. Then Anuradha said, Mother. There is nothing wrong in giving two days time. There are three more days before the council of ministers and councils meet. Until then, let the prince think in peace. Said. Mother. Mother. Does anyone know this secret but themselves and the prime minister? Madhurandhagen asked with sudden eagerness. We do not know what evil thoughts arose in his heart, what intrigues began to sprout. Madhurandhagen's excitement was a little surprising to the daughter of Malavarayar. Besides us, only three people knew. My son. Among them, your father, Shivain Sach Selvara, the husband who lived in my Chintai, has passed away. He and his sister, two dumb women, no. One of them, who bore you died two days ago in Sundara Chola's palace. Her lifeless body. I looked to tell you the truth as it lay unburied. But it did not occur to me. I did not wish to torment you. I remained silent. Son. If you are to weep for her who gave birth to you, weep. Unless she gave birth to you, then you had nothing to do with her. She did not even try to come and see you. She lost and became a beggar. No, no, I couldn't think of anyone but myself as mother. I wouldn't have gone near her even if they had told me before. Who else knows the secret, mother? Who is that other dumb woman? He asked. It is her younger sister, who is raising her outside of Tanjore with Nandavana. She is the one who replaced the baby who died in my womb and you were born like a log. She was born mute and deaf so she will not tell anyone. She also has a son. Mother and son are doing Pushpa service to Talikulatar Temple in Tanjore. I am the one giving them a grant. Supporting. A.G.A. I know them. I know both the mother and the son. The son's name is Santhan A. Muthan. Van Diathavan is the one who helped him escape from here. Mother. Does the child know anything about this? I don't know, son. I don't know. His mother has sworn to me that she won't tell anyone this secret. You don't have to worry about it. Besides her, I'm also the first minister. At that time many terrible evil thoughts appeared in the mind of Madhurandha. He thought that if these two leave this world, there is no one who can tell the truth. I am not under any obligation to the Prime Minister. This Mataragio is not really my mother. Why should I be kind to them? Aha! Uh -huh. Who is he who said in Sundara Chola's garden that he would announce the secret of my birth? Who told me to come to the treasure dungeon? What if I only meet him? Trying to kill Sundara Chola, he killed the mute woman. He is not guilty. They say she is my mother. If she is my mother, who is my father? Perhaps, perhaps this perfidious old woman, this pretender Brahmarayan is also trying to deceive me? Am I really the son of Sundara Chola, aha? How to know this truth? Son. I am coming, think carefully and quickly come to a decision. I have brought you up for twenty-two years with love ten times greater than a mother's, and I will not speak ill of you. Sacrifice this impermanent earthly kingdom. Seek a way to reach the eternal kingdom of Shiva. Said the great Pratiyar. Meanwhile, an unexpected incident happened. Aromas Hivarman came into that room. Near Sempian came to Mathavi and bowed. Devi. I have accepted the advice you gave to your lovely son as the advice you gave me. 
If this Chola kingdom is mine, I am ready to sacrifice it. By your blessings, let my soul go to the lotus feet of Lord Shiva. A small place in the Shiva kingdom, near the place where her husband, the great Kandaratatha, resides. Let me have it. Bless me so. He said. On hearing this, Sempi and Mathavi and Chief Minister Aniruthap Brahmariar looked at each other and stood stunned. A while ago you were saying that only the mother of Sendan Amuthan knew the secret of Madhurandhakar's birth. That's not right. Even my younger brother Brady and I know that. I often met Mandakini Devi, who sacrificed her life to save the Emperor's life in Elam. He communicated all this to me through figurative language. I told my father. We both thought and came to a conclusion. Madhurandak Devar, my younger father, should have sat on the Chola throne. He was raised with a thousand times more support than their own son. It was the son born in the womb of Goddess Mandakini who saved me from drowning in Kaveri flood and helped me to survive many times later. Therefore, he has the right to ascend the Chola throne no matter what. If there is any doubt about his right, I will settle it. On the Chola throne, I will sacrifice my Pati Eathi as the commandment of their lotus feet. Therefore, there is no need for them to say that Madhurandak Deva is not their son. There is no need to sacrifice the throne of Madhurandhagar Chola. On hearing what Pani Selvar had said, the three in the room felt astonishment and awe that they had never experienced in their lives. Among them, Anuradha was the first to attain enlightenment. Prince. The words you have just spoken must be recorded in epic and legend. They must be engraved on black stone, on silver, and on gold plates. But we here alone cannot decide on this matter. We must consult the emperor and the other princes. Think a little about what the people will say if the truth is revealed in a later time. Let's see. Prince. There are only three days left before the great council convenes. Until then, let's each one relax and think deeply. Said.